NFL preview vaults into part two of the 96 campaign where Eagles dare. Detmer does Dallas. The left-hander may be left out for the Lion-Packer game, but Air McNair leaps into action at Seattle. The struggling Dolphins can expect hats on the back in Foxborough, and why Washington rolls on and on. Terry Allen, T.A., is Mr. T.D. Without my family and, and my faith in God, I, I probably wouldn't be back. And this ex-battering ram comes face-to-face -face with St. Louis. NFL preview. Good for some leftover tricks and treats. That wasn't really a mask. That was the actual guy. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to NFL Preview. We usher in the second half of the regular season. And like Morgan Freeman said in Shawshank Redemption, time for NFL teams to get busy living or get busy dying. I'm Vince Cellini, joined by James Lofton, Ron Meyer, and Peter King will be with us shortly from Green Bay for the Lion Packer game. He's up at Lambeau Field. But our show begins in Big D, a grudge match in the NFC East. 6-2 Philadelphia at 5-3 Dallas. The Cowboys have won four straight now and six of seven against Philly, including a 23-19 victory back on September 30th. Now, in that game, Rodney Pete was lost for the season with a knee injury. Ty Detmer took over at quarterback. He has since posted a 3-0 mark as the Eagles starter. Today, however, Ty faces his biggest test. For more on that game, let's go live to Texas Stadium. Ed Werder is there to give us a setup on the World Champs, continuing a string of games, Ed, that will really test this team's medal. That's right, Vince. The Cowboys begin the second half of their season in the midst of the toughest four-game stretch they've played since they got back in the business of winning Super Bowls. Last week it was Miami. Now they play three straight games that will play a huge role in determining who has home field advantage in the NFC playoffs. They're going to play the Philadelphia Eagles today at Texas Stadium. They have a chance if they win that game to sweep the Eagles, move into second place in the NFC East, and they would hold a tiebreaker advantage over Philadelphia in the playoffs. That will happen again next week if they beat San Francisco. They have the same opportunity and then the week after that it's Green Bay. Green Bay and Dallas are the top two rated defensive teams in the NFL right now. The Cowboys are hoping for improvement as Charles Haley plays a bigger role. He returned last week. He's limited in practice because of his back. He's practicing once a week. He also had to take a pain-killing injection last week to play against the Dolphins and that may be periodically necessary for the rest of the year. Now how important is Haley to the Cowboys? Jerry Jones says the Cowboys can't spell Super Bowl without him. His job today along Along with Tony Tolbert and Leon Lettuce to collapse the pocket, put some pressure on Ty Detmer, especially inside pressure that could make his lack of height a real liability. Now the top three passers in the NFC right now are Green Bay's Brett Favre, Dallas's Troy Aikman, and a quarterback who's undefeated running the West Coast offense. If you think I'm talking about Steve Young, think again. Try Philadelphia's Ty Detmer. The Philadelphia Eagles not only have a short passing game, they also have a short passer. Teeny tiny Ty Detmer at 5'11 and 3 quarters is a veritable jockey of a quarterback. While growing up in San Antonio, Texas as a Roger Staubach admirer, Detmer somehow stopped short. He could play in a 6 foot and under league, which the NFL generally is not. There's a lot of guys out there that don't fit the, the mold that are making a lot of plays and uh, making some big plays on Sunday. So. Um, it takes a little while to overcome the stereotype and, and uh, prove that you can play and, and be successful. If he lacks altitude, Detmer may have the right attitude to play quarterback for the Eagles. Toughness is a prerequisite for Philadelphia backups. When Rodney Pete went down with a season-ending knee injury against Dallas in the fifth game, it marked the third time in six years the Eagles' number one quarterback limped off early in the year. Not only that, but the Eagles have lost their starting quarterback to injury the last two times they've played the Cowboys, a streak the Eagles and Detmer hope to end. For a short guy, small guy, he's a, uh, you know, he, I don't want to say he's got a lot of, a lot of cojones. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I grew up playing quarterback, you know, and, and playing in a, a pocket system, and so it's, you know, it's natural for me to stand in the pocket and throw the ball and and, uh, you know, take some of the hits. He uh, strikes me as a fighter. You hit him in the mouth, that's fine. He's going to get up and he's going to try to get the job done. Uh, the next play, not really worrying about getting hit in the mouth again. He'll get in, your, in the D lineman's face, you know, well, you know, or face the chest at least. And, uh, you know, he, he, you know it's, it's, his, it's his ball. It's his game. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, he, he's going to lead us. Since becoming the starter, Detmer has led the Eagles to three consecutive victories. The former Heisman Trophy winner has completed 62% of his passes, throwing for five touchdowns with just two interceptions. His success represents the fusion of an intelligent player and the ideal offensive system for a quarterback. 
The fiery Detmer is 29 years old and has developed a thorough understanding of the Eagles version of the San Francisco West Coast offense. I think I have a good feel for what's going on around me. Uh, you know, I work the pocket pretty good, I think. Uh, you know, feel the pressure when it's coming, how long you have to throw it, and, and I know the offense. Being able to make the right reads, uh, putting the ball on time in the right place to the guy who is open. Um, he does a great job of reading defenses, audibling when he needs to, uh, getting out of bad situations. Detmer was not a consensus choice when the Eagles signed him from Green Bay as an unrestricted free agent in the offseason. And when Pete went down, there were some who thought Jeff George should have been brought in. But having spent time with Detmer in Green Bay, Ray Rhodes stuck with him. When you believe in somebody, you don't, you're going to give them that opportunity. And I know this young man's going to give us everything he has. That's the, that's the key thing with me, the fact that I know that he's going to go out and, and compete his little rear end off to help us win football games. And that's something that's, uh, that's, that a whole lot of people didn't, didn't see in this guy. I did some checking this week. I asked some personnel people in the league to research the NFL scouting combine records and check Ty Detmer's height. He checked in at 5'11 and 3 quarters, and that's not too far from some of the great passers in the NFL. Steve Young is six foot and a half. Joe Montana, 6'1 and 3 eighths. Now, Ray Rhodes has had great confidence in De Ty Detmer since the two were in Green Bay getting ready for a 93 playoff game against Dallas. Rhodes was a defensive coordinator. Detmer was a third string quarterback running the scout team, impersonating Troy Aikman. He did it so well, he may have shaken the confidence of the Packer defense coming into that game. In the two minute drill, he was 12 for 12 one day, 10 for 12 the next. Ray Rhodes turned to one of his assistant coaches and said, if he's gonna do that to us, what might Troy Aikman do? <laughs> Thank you very much, Eddie. And, of course, Ty Detmer is no Troy Aikman, but he kind of played him in the NFL a week ago. 342 yards passing against Carolina. Did a good job. Carried the load while Ricky Waters was shut down just 33 yards. Ron, is Ty ready for this challenge in Dallas today? Well, time will tell, Vince. You know, when you talk about Ty, his own coach describes him as he's like your local paper boy out there running around uh, in the NFL. But Ty, we should remember, he was a third-team quarterback at Green Bay. Let go there. He could not beat out Rodney Pete. He was a second-team quarterback for the Eagles, who's now elevated due to the injury. He is now going to face his toughest challenge against what I believe is the best defense in the NFL today in Dallas. And a challenge, certainly, for the uh, Dallas Cowboys and their receiving core, and Michael Irvin, who steps up against some bigger people at corner now for Philadelphia. My, how they've grown at corner. Yeah, they have taken on new dimensions, and we have some numbers to look at what has happened to the secondary in with the Philadelphia Eagles. They have actually grown right in front of our eyes. Eric Allen, Mark McMillan have been replaced. The Eagles have added 10 inches and 71 pounds, and that's all due to the bumping and shoving that Michael Irvin would put on these little guys. And now it's gotten to the point where they aren't guys he can push around anymore. Bobby Taylor shut Michael Irvin down last year in the last regular season game. He caught three passes for 40 yards, and then in the playoffs, Irvin only one catch nine yards so he did an absolutely magnificent job on him granted he had safety help but that additional size is what really helps right bobby taylor's done an outstanding job michael irvin's on a roll right now and this month of november should tell us a lot about the world champions eddie mentioned that string of games that they have to play and it starts today with philadelphia all right we have to take a break uh, on nfl preview and then we move right on with the lion lament is scott mitchell ready for detroit's biggest game of the year the lefty has rib problems and that could be big problems for the lions at green bay also was Dale Carter way out of bounds with a low bridge shot against the Broncos last week? We'll talk about that too. Chop, chop. At BASF, we don't make the mattress. We make it softer. We don't make the boots. We make them drier. We don't make the house. We make it livelier. We don't make the snowboard. We make it stronger. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Tree. Nobody.
Nobody else has it. Only Headline News has the sports ticket. Continuously updated scores from around the NFL, even when the games are in progress. Headline News Sports Ticker. Now you'll always know the score. Another action-packed week in the NBA. All the spectacular moves, the jams, the bombs from three-point land, and all the highlights with Nick and Fred, the best team in sports. This week in the NBA, tonight, 11.30 Eastern on CNN. Green Bay, Wisconsin, and Lambeau Field. Is there a better venue in pro football? I think not. The pack looks to move to 8-1 and 5-0 and and oh at home today against the visiting Detroit Lions. Hey, get out of our shot. The Lions and the Packers split last season, though Green Bay has won the last four at Lambeau. And this was set up to be a meeting between pass-happy Scott Mitchell and Brett Favre. But Mitchell's listed as doubtful for this game with bruised ribs following his bruised ego last week after being yanked against the Giants. Now, Sports Illustrated senior writer Peter King is with us from Green Bay. And Peter, good morning. And you have the latest on Mitchell and that Fonts fallout. Yeah, beautiful day here, Vince, by the way. 31 degrees, seven mile an hour winds, a cloudless sky, a day Vince Lombardi, even Jerry Stiller would love. Uh, the latest on the Mitchell Fonts blow up is this. On Thursday at practice, Scott Mitchell went down like he was shot with a torn rib cartilage in, on the right side of his ribs. They're not sure if he's going to play today. In a few minutes, right behind me, Mitchell's going to come out, test his ailing ribs, see if he can go. If not, it's going to be the magic man, Don Mikowski, the former Packer, starting for the Lions. Now, as far as Mitchell and Fonts are concerned, you can, you can bank on this, Vince. Mitchell and Fonts will not return in tandem to the Lions next year. Mitchell is in the middle of contract negotiations, and Fonts is on the precipice of getting fired. So you're going to see one or the other back next year. My money's on Scott Mitchell. All right, interesting. Wayne Fonts in trouble, job trouble. That's, that's strange. All right, Peter, we have to ask you, who, who's that imposter wearing number 20 for Detroit? I mean, Barry Sanders, six games without a 100-yard game, and that's like Brian Cox going six games without an obscene gesture. In, in two, first two games, 288 yards, best start of his career. Next six, he's averaging 59 and a half yards and less, three yards less a carry. So what's with Barry? Well, Vince, you got a lot of assistants on that team and, and people inside the organization really scratching their heads about the use of Barry Sanders. Last year against the Giants, five first-half carries for the most dangerous weapon in football. Probably the most damaging thing about how he's being used this year in my mind is that you know, he's the biggest weapon in football, and he's u been used on less than three of every ten offensive plays. Now, this certainly is not going to go over well if they continue to not use him uh, as they should, and I think it's going to be another nail in Fonts' coffin. Well, one thing about that Detroit offense, maybe some predictability. Here's a quote from Herman Moore, their fine wide receiver, and he said last week in the Giant game, he talked to a Giant quarterback on the way off the field, asked him, are we that predictable? And the guy said, yeah, honestly, yes, you are. But, Ron, back to the fonts and the Mitchell setup. I thought being a head coach never means having to say you're sorry. I mean, do you remember apologizing to a quarterback? I can't ever remember that myself, Vince, but I'll tell you, when you deal with quarterbacks and their fragile egos, I look at Wayne Fonts, and he made one mistake compound right into another. First of all, don't bench your starter and take him out during a series. If you expect loyalty from your players, you've got to give loyalty back. And secondly, after you make a horrendous mistake, don't come out and kiss and hug and make up and say, I'm sorry. I think you'd lose a lot of credibility there. This might be Wayne's last straw in Detroit. Yeah, well, absolutely. Well, wait a minute. How about Eric Dickerson? I mean, no, you, wait you had to appease him all the time. And he, wasn't a, he wasn't a quarterback. <laughs> but he, he, was he qualified that, man, though. I like that. He qualified that, though. All right, let's go back to Peter King at beautiful Lambeau Field. And Peter, on the other side of the ball, here's the Packers now. You know, lost another wide receiver last week. Antonio Freeman broke the uh, left forearm. He's out at least a month. So no Brooks, no Freeman for Brett Favre. How has that affected Brett Favre as a quarterback? Oh, I think greatly. He's lost his two favorite receivers, obviously, Antonio Freeman and, and, uh, and Robert Brooks. And right now, you know, I asked Mike Holmgren the other day, who do you go to now? I mean, what's going on with your receivers now? He says, hey, it's great to get Terry Mickens back. And I said, Terry Mickens? <laughs> I mean, this is what it's come to. They're going to they're gonna play two guys at split end today, Terry Mickens and Anthony Morgan, who have not suited up for the Packers in the regular season this year. They're in trouble, Vince. Mm, I still have the magic of Lambeau. But let me ask you, as a, as a wide receiver, James, what kind of an adjustment that is for the quarterback receiver, new guy coming in? Uh, it's a real simple adjustment. You throw it to the guys who you know best, the tight ends, Mark Jamore and Keith Jackson. They both only have 15 receptions right now, and I say only because these guys will start to load up. 
And even though the wide receivers are down, believe me, the tight ends are in the corner just counting their incentive money. <laughs> they really are. But uh, we mentioned the magic of, of Lambeau. Holmgren is 23-4 and four there in his first 27 games at Lambeau Field. Jerry Stiller, 22-5. and five in his first 27 Ooh. games, so he's better than Vince was. I'm curious to it. A couple of five and three teams now trying to get off the schneid, do battle in the Metrodome. Kansas City at Minnesota, and a decidedly different backfield for Minnesota, coming off that two-point loss to the Bears, 15-13. Warren Moon re-injuring the right ankle, so Brad Johnson gets the nod at quarterback. Now, Johnson, we've seen him this year. He's relieved Moon in beating Detroit in week one, then Atlanta the following week, so he takes over. He's a long-time backup for Moon, but pretty effective when he's been given the opportunity, as number 14, Ben. Completing 63% of his passes, 511 yards, three touchdowns, and just one pick there. But, you know, guys, I think the real problem is, is losing uh, uh, Robert Smith now, at almost 700 yards rushing for the Vikings. Well, I'll tell you, the long striding Smith has been prone to injury. And what really is troubling to me is I don't like his backups. I think they're much more in danger of missing. A, war, or a, a Robert Smith and Warren Moon because the backups of Amp Lee and Scotty Graham just don't match up to Brad Johnson, who I think is playing very well. I think a lot of people are waiting for Brad to step forward here for the Vikings mm -hmm. and give a run at these Chiefs. Well, he's been waiting, but Gene, as far as the Chiefs are concerned, they have problems of their own on offense. They were just shut down last week by Denver. And, and what about this now famous chop block by Dale Carter? You know, you're a former wide receiver yeah. now. Did you go after DBs like that? Well, yeah, I might try. And let's take a look at it because what Dale Carter does, it, it's not against. We freeze it right there, and it's directly at the knee. The thing about it, in this play, Lionel Washington was looking in the backfield. It was only a three-yard gain, so the play was essentially over. And here's what happened. The Broncos were so incensed. They went after Dale Carter when he went back to the sideline. He had to be restrained by Marty Schottenheimer. And, and I don't think it was so much that one particular play where he is chop blocking him, but his actions afterwards once he got to the sideline. Mm -hmm. Ron, what's your well, you know, being an ex-cornerback or really an active cornerback now playing offense, I think it's just payback time. I think Dale just goes down there and chops anybody he can. It's a legal play, and quite frankly, you better have your head on a swivel out there when you're on an NFL football field or somebody will knock it off. In this case, they knock the knee off. Yeah, well, Dale's facing his brother, Jake Reed, now, of the Vikings, so we'll see if he pulls that on a sibling. I don't know. No, I don't think he no, will. No, he won't, he won't do that. Watch. All right, the Seattle Seahawks finally won a game outside of Florida. They beat lame San Diego a week ago in the Kingdom. Today, the Houston Oilers are visiting with Steve McNair starting in place of Chris Chandler, who's out with that bad groin. Now, Aaron McNair, 2-0 last season as a starter. James, what type of problems, though, might Mr. McNair face in Seattle? I think the toughest thing for him is going to be the crowd noise. This is a young quarterback. He's going to go up there. But one thing that will help him is his ability to move around in the pocket. Granted, Eddie George is there, but when your lineman can't get off on the snap count and they have to just look at the ball, that makes it tough in the pass rushes. You get all those what I call dome sacks because of the crowd noise. Yeah, we'll just hand off to Eddie George, when in doubt. The it, real it battle could, yeah, it could be Eddie George and uh, Chris Warren, who came alive with 146 yards rushing a week ago. All right, we have to take another break. Coming back on NFL Preview, the Dolphins had better come up for air soon or it's going to be the drowning pool for Jimmy and his men. The Finns are floundering and facing a feisty Patriot team in Foxborough. We'll talk about that and more. It is a deep-rooted belief that life, by its very nature, is good and that given time, everything in life, in its own way, gets better. Even cars. The new Camry. Smoother. Quieter. Better than ever. TWA flies to wonderful international cities. I fly them all, I love them all, I paint them all! Like London. Oh, what a beautiful city. And Paris. Obviously in the spring. Frankfurt at sunrise. Oh, I want to go back. The Frankfurt at sunset. Madrid at night. I call this one Rome. Happy and red. Don't cry for me. Barcelona. Thinking about Europe in the Middle East? Think Trans World Airlines. We're up to something good. Cairo, Cairo, Cairo. Like it? At BASF, we don't make the skates, we make them ride smoother. We don't make the car, we make it more colorful. We don't make the shampoo, we make it gentler. We don't make the helmet, we make it more comfortable. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. 
BASF. Imagine a news network that covers sports the way Sports Illustrated covers sports. And it covered the world of sports like CNN covers the world. Introducing CNNSI, around-the-clock coverage of sports news from around the world. 24 hours a day, CNNSI will take viewers to where sports news is happening. Utilizing the vast resources of CNN and Sports Illustrated, the world's premier sports publication. Together, CNNSI will offer viewers the most immediate and comprehensive sports news coverage available. CNNSI will call upon the finest team of print and broadcast journalists, editors, and sports analysts ever assembled. Capturing all the drama and all of the spectacle of sport, the personalities and the controversies, the big wins and the heartbreaking defeats. No matter where sports is making news, CNNSI will be there. Call your cable or satellite company and ask them about CNNSI. And we are back. Remember when the Miami Dolphins were the darlings of the AFC, a 3-0 star? Talk of Jimmy Johnson's magic in South Beach. Well, Miami has since lost four of five, and they're facing a hot Patriot team, winners of five of their last six, tied for the division lead at five and three. Now, the subplot in this game is ex-Dolphin Keith Byers taking some pot shots against his old coach, Jimmy Johnson. He said, among other things, when he was cut by the Dolphins, that Jimmy doesn't want any leaders uh, down there. He wants followers in Miami. But... You know, bitter players do come and go, I guess, in, in the league. So two teams going in opposite directions. By the way, Byers doesn't apologize for his comments. Uh, the Patriots 24-10 uh, uh, in week one. They lose to Miami. But this is a decidedly different team now for the Pats. Yeah, they have put all the pieces together offensively. But the only question mark about them is defensively. This is a team that has only accounted for 14 sacks. And then the coverage goes along with it. 248 yards. They give up passing each week. Mm -hmm. Worst in the AFC. So they need to improve in that area if they will want to make a stretch run. Well, speaking of defense, uh, I just can't believe how the Dolphin defenders tried to go one-on-one -on -one out there at the corners wow. with Buckley and Jackson against those fine receivers, particularly Michael Irvin of the Cowboys. One-on-one -on -one all day long, it was pitch and catch. Mm -hmm. If they expect to do that against Bledsoe and his outside receivers and Glenn and Jefferson, it's going to be a long day for George Hill, the defensive coordinator of the Dolphins. Yeah, I'm sure Hill went to school after what happened yeah. last week. <laughs> all right, the rally cry for the Chargers and Colts this week is... Man, that hurts. There are two <laughs> banged up clubs meeting at Indy and James. The Colts have pounded the, the Pats uh, at the end at Washington. They were pounded by uh, both of them. Now they face uh, Sean Salisbury and the Chargers at uh, his quarterback uh, yeah, situation. Yeah, you're right. Sean Salisbury, maybe he doesn't really want to be in this ball game because the one thing that the Colts do well is they get after the passer. Junior Seau still has that knee problem. So it's a banged up Colts team, banged up Chargers team, and they want to get back in it, but they may not be able to on the road. All right, Junior Seau should be back. He has some knee problems, but if uh, Junior has anything to say, about it. I'm sure this week he's not going to sit out again. All right, when the uh, show motors on, we'll be back with a little quiz. See if you can answer this. You know, Packer passer Brett Favre leads the league in touchdown passes with 21. He's the highest rated passer, but who's number two in both departments? The answer may surprise you. Champ, there's something wrong with my car. Could you take a look? I'll check it out. You need suspension work. Better see the experts at Meineke. Meineke does suspension? Meineke doesn't just do mufflers and brakes. They do complete undercar care. Now, buy any Gabriel gas shock or gas strut at Meineke's regular low price. Get the second one at 25% off. This is a limited time offer, so hurry. At Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. Life isn't just measured in days or years. It's measured in doorways and walkways or a favorite sweater long outgrown. At State Farm, we give our policyholders a yardstick of their own. It's called the Family Insurance Checkup. It helps them measure their own needs and pick the coverage that's right for them. So call your agent for a checkup. Because insurance, like other things in life, is something you never want to outgrow. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Thank you. I check a lot of bags for TWA. Send them to places like JFK and LAX. Now I'm checking quite a few to CUN, LAS, even YYZ. Along with those to PBI, MCI, and MLI. Way overpacked for MCO. More like DEN or something. <laughs> for over 90 cities worldwide, think Transworld Airlines. We're up to something good. SFO, SAN, SRQ, SNA, SEA. Before Michael became Air Jordan, Dr. J explored the stratosphere. Before the daring escapades of Pistol Pete, 
Bob Cousy threw caution to the wind. And before Bird versus Magic, there was Russell versus Chamberlain. Join host Denzel Washington for the celebration of NBA at 50. The heart, soul, and stories of the men who have made the game famous. World premiere Wednesday, November 13th on TNT. Well, this used to be the Battle of Ohio, but then somebody went and left town. I'm a little bitter. The Bengals and Bruce Coslett at the Ravens. Cos is now 1-0 after beating Jacksonville. Now the Ravens won in overtime against the Rams thanks to Sir Vincent of Testaverde. Vinny's audible touchdown pass to Michael Jackson was the game winner in overtime, and he's been on a big-time roll. His last four games, almost 61% completions, 1,355 yards through the air. You see 13 touchdowns there. In fact, his 18 touchdowns overall, second only to Favre's 21. He's also the highest-rated passer in the AFC. He's thrown for three or more touchdowns in each of his last four games. In other words, he's hot. Let's bring back Peter King now in Green Bay. And Peter, is this the finest stretch performance uh, or stretch-wise that he's gone in his career, you know, touchdown-wise, completion-wise for Vinny Testaverde? And why is he playing so well? Well, Vince, certainly some of it is because he's playing from behind all the time and he's just winging the ball and throwing a lot more passes than he ever has in an eight-game stretch in his career. But the other key thing with Testaverde right now is that he's playing the no-huddle offense. In the past, he's only had a small taste of that with Sam Weich five years ago. But now Ted, Ted Marchabrota trusts him to run the no-huddle. Vinny's a pitch-and-catch guy. He loves this, Vince. Well, Vinny could stay hot because the Bengals are 13th overall in the AFC in pass defense. But Vinny Testaverde, just one of the surprise players in the league this year. At the halfway point of the season, we'd like to talk about some NFL personnel surprising us either by terrific or substandard performances. It's kind of our best and worst, best and worst at the midterm. So, Peter, why don't you give us your midterm grades at this point? Surprising team and player, disappointing team and player. Well, I, I really like Michael Sinclair of the Seahawks. Guy who's really come on as a sacker, kind of the Leon Lett of defensive ends. He comes from a small college at Eastern New Mexico. As far as the team, it's no contest. The Redskins, I think, are stunning everybody. Disappointing player, I think, clearly Kajana Carter, the first pick in the draft a couple of years ago, should be doing better and should be healthier than he is right now. You know, he's a major disappointment. To me, the team that's disappointing, even though they're 5-3, and three, is Kansas City. This is a much better team than a 3 loss team through October and your Super Bowl pick I might add yes exactly right they're making me look awful bad uh, James why don't you take it from here so well, I pick up right where Peter left off and that would be with Steve Bono the guy has not had the type of year that Marty Schottenheimer would like because he's supposed to protect the football and he hasn't done that last year they were seven and one at this point through the first eight games this year he's thrown nine touchdowns seven interceptions the halfway point last year 15 touchdowns, four interceptions, but his real problem, it, it, it isn't just Steve Bono. Lake Dawson was supposed to be there. He's injured. Mark Vanover was supposed to be a big play receiver. The guy only has 14 receptions. Ronald? Well, you know, I'm not going to pick on any single player. I'm going to pick on a team. Look at those Atlanta Falcons. 0-8. Oh they mm -hmm. can't even win in a court case against Jeff George. They lose the money outside of it. So the Atlanta Falcons, who I picked as a playoff team, they were in the playoffs last year. They're out, and it's very disappointing. And most of all, I see no future for them, Vince. Mm. Would you say your pink jacket's the most surprising <laughs> or disappointing <laughs> garment we've seen on the show? Listen, I'm going to give that to your favorite charity, and they can <laughs> auction it off or they can burn it, either one. <laughs> <laughs> when NFL preview returns, well, Terry Allen of the Redskins, he went from major surgery to major impact in Washington, D.C. You know, I had doubts every day. Uh, every day when I was rehabbing, and uh, I would always wonder, where am I going to be able to come back? You'll hear how Allen came through major reconstruction of both knees and now is on pace to shatter the league's rushing touchdown record. His amazing comeback, our story next. Today on Late Edition, key players from the presidential race and Capitol Hill sum it all up. Plus, Mario Cuomo and Bill Bennett. Late Edition today, noon Eastern on CNN. This is a photo Harry took of me just after we got this fabulous rug from International Carpet and Blinds. And these are just some of the others I took shots of. Whoa! I think I want them, too. But Harry, that's him. Thought they cost too much. Not so, said I. At ICB, all their rugs are discounted up to 70% off. I mean, Turkish from $199, Persian from $59. Can you believe it? And great service, too. Anyway, guess what? Harry said, buy them all. At these prices, even he can be a big shot. Free Continental One Pass Miles at ICB, the Marketplace, Princeton. African Tanzanite. Australian Opals. 
How can gems this rare and this beautiful be so affordable? Ceylon sapphires, Mozambique garnets. How can gems from remote corners of the world be so easy to find? Because Home Shopping Network goes straight to the mines and local craftsmen to bring these unique gems back to you. Tune in to discover rare finds on Home Shopping Network, America's jewelry store. Showbiz Today, weekdays, 5.30 Eastern on CNN. And welcome back to NFL Preview. And no question, the Washington Redskins have been the stunner in the league this season at 7-1. Shooting for the eight ball today in Rich Stadium, Buffalo. The Bills have lost two of their last three and braced themselves for the man who leads the league in rushing. We're talking about Terry Allen of the Redskins, and we shouldn't be surprised to see a dominant back in a Norv Turner backfield when the Skins head coach was at USC. The feature backs, Marcus Allen and Charles White. While with the Rams, Eric Dickerson, Greg Bell was there, and Norv had Emmett, of course, in Dallas, and now Allen in D.C. Paul Crane has more on the man who gets the call when the Redskins have the ball. When discussing the best running backs in the NFL, it's time to include the Redskins number 21. Terry Allen is probably the most underrated back in the NFL. He's a great player in his own right. Uh, and, you know, people that want to question that, I think all you have to do is look at the numbers. Terry Allen's numbers are impressive. More than 1,300 yards rushing last season and more than 800 through the first eight games of this year. But his 13 touchdowns have him on a pace to break the NFL record of 25 in a season set by Emmitt Smith a year ago. It's nice, and I, now I'm starting to pay attention to it. Uh, before the season, you know, I never really paid that much attention. I thought about it, scoring that many touchdowns, but right now, uh, you know, we're, we're scoring touchdowns in the red zone and, and then starting to add up, and it looks as though we have a, a shot at it now. Much of the reason Allen is spending so much time in the end zone is due to the time he has spent in here. Rehabbing from one reconstructive knee surgery is tough enough, but Terry Allen has done it twice. I had doubts every day. Uh, every day when I was rehabbing, and I would always wonder, where am I going to be able to come back? Allen blew out his left knee as a Vikings rookie in 1990, but was back to run for more than 1,200 yards by 1992. Then he blew out the right knee during training camp in 93 and missed that season as well. That was the toughest part of my career. I mean, that was tougher than being released from Minnesota. And, and, and I, you know, I thank God for the opportunity to be back on the field. Despite Allen becoming the first player in NFL history to follow a second reconstructive knee surgery by rushing for more than 1,000 yards the very next year, as he did with Minnesota in 1994, the Vikings released him, a move Allen has not forgotten. When I left Minnesota, I, I, that was that. You know, I'd never go back there and play again, no matter what happens. You know, if, if that's the only team that's willing to give me a job, then it's time to retire. But Allen appears to be a long way from retirement. All that work from rehab is paying dividends on the field, in the huddle, and in the locker room. That's a sign of somebody that works real hard and believes in themselves, you know, uh, to come back from two of them and to be running like he's doing and doing the things that he does. And it's not like he's just running through there every time without getting hit. He's getting hit, getting twisted up and everything else, and he just pops up and keeps going. You know, he gets up, he's hyped, he's amped, come back to the huddle with that stare of his, you know, you know what's on. And you know, we about to bring it to their chest, you know what I'm saying? So I think that gets you amped. You know, you want to bring it to them, you like, you see him doing it, gets you fired up, you want to see him do it more and more, and you, you just get excited. You know, you want to, he brings the beast out, you know what I'm saying? You want to get, you want to get, a, get involved. In my mind, uh, you know, there, there is no injury problem. Uh, I don't think anyone in our organization thinks about his knees. I think about all the production he's had. And is havoc. Allen is in one of those zones running backs dream about. But then he's worked harder than most to get there. When you get into a floor game, it seems like the defense slows down and, and you, you just, you, you're going faster than everybody else on the field. And that's the feeling I've been having. It's like uh, everything's moving in slow motion and I'm the only one in uh, live speed. Well, you gotta like that. Gotta love it. Which has all the Redskins smiling right now. In Ashburn, Virginia, Paul Crane, CNN Sports. All right, thank you, Paul. Yes, they have Terry Allen, but will the Redskins keep him? Peter King, Allen was a training camp holdout. He signed a one-year deal. He's an unrestricted free agent at season's end. You know, what do the Skins do now? 
Well, Terry Allen's headed for his second straight 1,300 yard season. And there's very little question he'll be the most heralded free agent running back in the five year history of the system. But Washington's got a big dilemma. The salary cap's only going to go up about 3% this offseason, and Washington simply has to re sign Sean Gilbert. Vince, I think Terry Allen could be entering the last two months of his Washington career. Wow, that would be unbelievable. Have that productive a career and not be back. All right, uh, Ron, for Washington, dominant running has long been a staple of their offense with John Riggins, and now they've used that counter tray and updated it a little bit. Well, Vince, it was a counter tray. Now it's a counter sway. And that Y is for a Y in that the offset move into the backfield, and there he is blocking right there knocking out the onside play side linebacker and there he is terry allen running don't lose him later on you'll see two tight ends imposed in their offense it's different than the dallas concept vince because there's not just the eye back which you see but you see jim hannafin who's an old joe gibbs holdover has his influence in bringing that type of offense back all right well the buffalo bills james have done a good job in stopping the run this year against guys like curtis martin marshall falk and of course emmett so that's that's not really a, a big problem for them the problem, the, problem? The, the problem may be, I'm not saying it is, it may be Jim Kelly has four touchdowns and 12 interceptions. What's the latest on your XQB? Well, you know, I've, I've given this a lot of thought. And Jim Kelly, granted, he's had two last-minute <laughs> interceptions that have cost him ballgames against Miami last week against New England. But think about it. In this franchise's history, there has been no other player who has done as much for the Buffalo Bills as Jim Kelly. Not O.J. Simpson, not Bruce Smith, not Thurman Thomas, not Jack Kemp, not Bob Dole. Nobody. So stick <laughs> with Jim Kelly all the way. That was very good. Thank you. you slipped that right in there. You've been wanting to do Bob Dole on TV <laughs> for a long time. Way to work that in. All right. Back with more on NFL preview in just a moment. When we come back, so much riding on the second half for coaches on the seat, which is very, very hot. The fate of several NFL head coaches to be decided over the final weeks of the campaign. We'll talk about who may be set free because there are no lifetime coaching contracts in the NFL. I whack the weeds. <laughs> so you want to know what's on my Discover Card statement. I'm a camp cook and a bad one, but I've got a good stove. And he loves to chase that. <laughs> the cash back bonus award. It all folds up into it, Terry. Uh, she loves to get flowers, and I love to give them. How many credit cards make a statement like that? Well, the toughest thing about uh, buying a wetsuit is, is trying them on. It pays to discover. <laughs> Use it where you see the Noah sign. There's no such thing as a replacement for good exercise. People who are so concerned about their diet but don't exercise are making a big mistake. The Health Rider is a darn easy way to do it. You just get a total body workout and that's what raises metabolism and that's what burns calories. You know what bothers me is that with all the machines that are out there, they're all doing their best to, to tell one lie after another about, wow, this machine's better than that machine. They go on and on and on and on. And in the end, there's something that they can't argue about, which is this is the best systemic total body workout since the swimming pool was invented. You can't find anything any better. Call now for the proven performance of Genuine Health Rider. You want real results? Then you need a real total body solution. Don't be misled. Fitness fads come and go. More than 4 million people have seen the proof for themselves. They know it. Now you know it. Nothing else works like Health Rider. Call right now for free information or how to order. Nobody else has it. Only Headline News has the sports ticket. Continuously updated scores from around the NFL, even when the games are in progress. Headline News Sports Ticker. Now you'll always know the score. Today on CNN's Late Edition, two days to go. I'm Frank Sesno. Key players from the presidential race and Capitol Hill sum it all up. Plus our campaign duo, Cuomo and Bennett. Late Edition, today, noon Eastern on CNN. Welcome back out of the NFC West. It's the 49ers pulling a MacGyver last week and beating Houston 10-9 with Jeff Brom looking every bit the Niner hero at quarterback. Should be Steve Young returning from the concussion to face the New Orleans Saints and their new look. Ron, Jim Mora out of there. They had the bye week. What can we expect from the Saints? Well, Rick Venturi replaces Mora, but that's not the significant thing. Look at Bruce Ahrens, their running back, replacing Carl Smith, the offensive coordinator. You're going to see a two-back set look a lot like the 49ers, the addition of automatics, and you're going to see a quick three-step drop, and you're going to see Everett throw the ball really quick and avoid those costly sacks. That's the new look. Well, but will they win? No, they won't win. <laughs> you can look like the 49ers. Whether or not you play like the 49ers, that's another story. All right, uh, Peter King is with us again from Green Bay. And Peter, what can we expect now from 
the Saints uh, as we look down the road? Well, I think they're obviously going to have to look for a coach with some marquee value, Vince. And the biggest guy out there, the biggest name out there is Mike Ditka. Now, clearly the Saints need something to help them sell tickets. They've averaged 26,000 empty seats a date in the Superdome this year. But I think one of the key things right now is that in all the coaches who are out there available, Ditka is the only one really who has any marquee name. And there are some owners, Vince, who will shy away from Mike Ditka because of his association with a riverboat casino outside of New Orleans a couple of years ago. All right. Easy, easy on the horn out there, by the way. Peter, can you... <laughs> You know, they're, they're, they're I'll tell tormenting them to quiet us. Down. Yeah, tell your fan club to hold it down. Uh, you know, with the Saints, they'll start the coaching search in December. They're looking for that new guy. You mentioned Ditka possibly, but we wondered where some other vacancies might uh, arise in the, in the National Football League. And during the course of the season, man, we've assembled a long list of guys. We don't wish them out, but should something happen, maybe a job will open up. And it's, it's almost like 1991 when nine coaching jobs opened up in the National Football League. But James, you take a look at the list there, and you know players know when their coach may or may not be in trouble. How does that affect certain players to either have a coach in trouble or go through a midseason change? Yeah, well, the player's job is also in jeopardy, and the players realize that. And you know they have that sense of urgency where they might try and play a little harder. But also in this era of free agency, if you have an assistant coach who you think is going to become a head coach somewhere, he can collect quote his own players and move on to the next spot. Well, Ron, you've been there. Yeah. That's, that's why you're here with us. <laughs> I was one of those in 91, I'll guarantee you, Vince, and unfortunately it gets to you. But I kind of blame these constant talk shows and the media hype and everything. They get on a guy like Rich Brooks. He's been there a year and a half with a rookie quarterback. He's the Rams coach. He's under a lot of fire. I don't think that's fair. What would you do about it? Well, <laughs> get my sign out. We'll coach for food. <laughs> Call 1-800-RON-MEYER. He'll, he'll take care of you. All right, we have to take a break on NFL preview. Then come back with a former Ram locking horns with his old team. Jerome Bettis meeting today's challenge like he meets opposing tacklers. Head on. Rams at the Steelers and the Bettis Brigade is ready to rumble. It's a funny thing. All these guys built empires, made loads of money, yet rarely ever cracked a smile. At CNN FF, we'll help you make a few bucks and have a good time doing it. CNN FF, it's not the same old business. It's business unusual. It is the source of live breaking news for the entire world. Available to over a half billion people on six continents. It's five networks backed by 3,000 professionals in 30 bureaus worldwide. It's correspondents, some of the best reporters in the business. From its site on the internet to over 600 global affiliates, it is television's largest and most experienced news gathering organization. This is CNN. Wednesday night. The NBA returns to TBS. Every week, see the NBA's best. Grant, Penny, Michael, and Shaq. Oh, my goodness. This Wednesday, Jordan, Pippen, and Rodman are back to defend their title. They'll face Alonzo in the Heat in Miami. Bulls in Heat, 8 Eastern Wednesday night on TBS. Don't miss a game. All right, here we go with the Sunday sampler. Atlanta, the lone winless team of the NFL, facing a Carolina team that beat them in week one, 29-6. Panthers had seven sacks that day. Tampa Bay at Chicago. The Bears won the last four in the series, 15-2 at home against the Bucks. Chicago limited Minnesota to 11 rushing yards last Monday night. And Cardinal quarterback Kent Graham facing his old team, the Giants. Giants have won the last three or four of the series. And St. Louis traded running back Jerome Bettis to the Steelers on draft day. But since then, the Rams have rushed for 669 yards as a team. Bettis, 824 by himself. Jerome Bettis, when he rushes over for over 100 yards, the Steelers are 6-0. Well, always a favorite come Monday night, the Raiders hosting the 7-1 Denver Broncos. Now, the Bronx with the best record in the AFC, yet the underdog in this game, the Raiders a point-and-a-half favorite. Unbelievable. Ex-Raider head coach Mike Shanahan, 2-0 against his old team. And Ronnie, the Raiders have to stop the top rusher in the NFL, top receiver in the AFC. Can they do that? 
Well, I tell you, it's going to be a tough task for those Raiders, but they have the defense that's got to look out for not only Terrell Davis, who's rushing the ball in great balance, but the guy that makes them go, I feel, is Shannon Sharp. They're tight end that just catches the ball as a wide receiver. He comes inside and blocks well as a tight end. He's a tough guy to defend. All right, you wonder why the Raiders are favored in this game? 12-0 at home on Monday night, 8-0 in Oakland, 2-0 against the Broncos. They are the Monday Night Kings. 12 and 0. You said it. <laughs> Commitment to excellence. Uh, the new USA Today CNN coaches poll is on the way, as is the Peter King notebook. Mr. King takes you inside the NFL as only he can. Word on Brett Favre and a contract situation coming up. Time now for our Athlete of the Week. The Yankees won their first World Series in 18 years, and closer John Wetland was as big a contributor as any. Wetland earned a save in each of New York's four victories and was named World Series MVP. Athlete of the Week, brought to you by the Discover Card. The card with a big payback. Hey, want to see some cool things? Where? At the Smithsonian. The famous flyers! Uh, to four-wheeler, uh, Tucker made 51 of these cars. Washington sold. Rocket ships. Dizzy Gillespie's trumpet. Lizard lips. The Smithsonian discovered. And Discover Card is proud to be partners in the anniversary celebration. Jaws. How many credit cards make a statement like that? You're not with AT&T, are you? No, I'm not. So, are you happy? Not really. I was happier with AT&T. Well, we're making it simple to come back. How'd you like to get 100 free minutes just for switching to AT&T? That, that would be wonderful. That's a real gift. Well, there's a lot more. Introducing the new AT&T One Rate Plan. Just 15 cents a minute on calls from home to anybody, anytime, anywhere in America. That's great. It's, it's a flat rate. Anytime, anybody, anywhere. I'm going to presume there's going to be a charge involved. No, it's free. It's even better. No fees, no minimum spending, no time requirements, no restrictions, no games. You can't beat that. Call 1-800-YES-TO-ATT. You'll get one low rate plus 100 free minutes for switching to AT&T. So what do you think? I think the 100 free minutes is awesome. <laughs> the one rate plan is excellent. There's no restrictions, no limits. So what are you going to do? Pick up the phone and switch to AT&T. One rate, 100 minutes. Call 1-800-YES-TO-ATT to switch. Beginning this winter, and for every championship season to follow, a new network dedicated to covering sports as never before. From CNN and Sports Illustrated, comes CNN SI. Around the clock coverage of sports news from around the world. Ask your cable or satellite provider about CNN SI, the 24 hour sports news network. We're back in NFL preview. Stationed at Lambeau Field for the Packer Lion game is Sports Illustrated senior writer Peter King, who takes out the notebook now and joins us with some inside word. And Peter, first of all, Scott Mitchell, status for this ball game. Well, he just worked out on the field in the last half hour, and we've just been told that Mitchell is going to be the third quarterback for the Lions today. And that's significant not only because Don Mikowski starts, returns to the scene of his prime and starts, but the backup quarterback is a guy named Johnny Johnson, who was the backup quarterback last year at the University of Illinois. And against a defense that has played as ferociously as this one so far this year, it would be amazing if they had to come in with a guy who was a Big Ten backup last year, Vince. Yeah, he'll be going, come on, Magic Man. Come on, baby. <laughs> All right. Uh, the latest on Brett Favre now. What about his battle with painkillers? We're halfway through the season. How is he dealing with that? Well, Vince, I talked to him at length the other day about it, and he said he has not been tempted even one time to take a Vicodin or any other painkiller stronger than a Motrin. So all he's taken is ibuprofen in the first eight weeks of the season. Feels fine. Still is appealing his disciplinary case to the NFL. Wants to be allowed a after a game to have a couple of beers. But he has not, uh, he, he, he has not felt any need whatsoever to do additional painkillers. The biggest thing with Favre right now, he's waiting this week to hopefully hear about his new contract seven-year deal would make him the highest paid player in football right now big stumbling block Vince he wants in his fourth fifth and sixth and seventh years to be able if his compensation falls behind the star quarterbacks of the day he wants uh, there be there to be a clause in there that he gets up with the big guys 
Uh, similar to the Ron Meyer broadcast clause here at uh, CNN, <laughs> Peter. And, and finally, Minnesota Viking coach Denny Green. He seemed pretty secure after a good start with the team, but I guess no guarantees now, are there? Well, just like your list that you showed before, there's a lot of guys in this yeah. league in trouble. And among them is Denny Green. There are guys on the 10-member Viking board of directors who want him out, who want to bring in Lou Holtz, which is totally bizarre to me that somebody could want Lou Holtz to coach their team after, you know, clearly the guy loses to Air Force every year, and he's got enough <laughs> talent, one of the top five talented recruiting classes every year. The other thing about the Vikings right now is that tomorrow looks like they're going to sign Leroy Horde to replace the injury. Robert Smith, so it'll be Horde and Scotty Campbell at the running back position the rest of the way, Vince. All right. Hey, bring back Lou Holtz and the option offense to the NFL, right? Mm -hmm. well, why not? Rick well, speaking Meyer of would love it. <laughs> Each week at this time now, we talk about college football in the form of the new USA Today CNN coaches poll. 25 teams, and it goes something like this. No position change in the top five. Florida's still a strong number one after routing Georgia. Florida State now six poll points ahead of number three, Ohio State, after trouncing Georgia Tech. The Buckeyes just hammered Minnesota. Arizona State hangs on to number four despite a fairly shaky performance against Oregon State. Nebraska is fifth. They demolished Oklahoma. Tennessee at number six after beating South Carolina. A win over Missouri keeps Colorado seventh. North Carolina crushes NC State, remains eighth. Michigan still ninth after hammering Michigan State. And Alabama jumps back into the top ten even though it had the weekend off. The coaches move up another team that had the weekend off. Kansas State at number 11. BYU moving up two places after trouncing UTEP. LSU enjoyed a weekend off, remained 13th. Penn State up only one spot despite a, uh, the putting an end to Minnesota, Northwestern's 13-game conference winning streak. Undefeated Wyoming is 15th. Virginia up two places after beating Duke. Virginia Tech up three with its win over Southwest Louisiana. Northwestern drops eight spots to 18th due to that loss at Penn State. Notre Dame used a lopsided win over Navy to move up two spots, and Washington cracks the top 20, beating USC. Rounding out the new coaches poll, Miami checks in at 21. Southern Miss up two spots after squeaking past Cincinnati. Syracuse back in the poll at number 23 thanks to its win at West Virginia. Auburn 24th off its win over Arkansas. Iowa back in at number 25 after the win over Illinois. The picks are next. Don't go away. Not easy being a rug. Ooh, that's cold. No respect at all. My whole life I keep getting stepped on. Oh, look at me. I'm a mess. Lady, we've been through this before. Spray ons, rubbins, they make things worse. Oh, I need the rug, doctor. Yeah, here it comes. Oh, lower. You are there. Oh, not here. Go find a tree. Hey, lady, better keep the rug doctor around. For the name of the rug doctor dealer location nearest you, call 1 800 Rug Doctor. There are many shades of scarlet, but only one red, gone with the wind. Check your local listings for time and channel. Okay, Max, I'm flying to Puerto Vallarta today. Can you say Puerto Vallarta? Santo Domingo. No, that was yesterday. Honolulu. Miami. Puerto Vallarta. Montego Bay, Orlando, Cancun. Puerto Vallarta. Fort Lauderdale. Uh. You can see all these sunny destinations on Transworld Airlines. We're up to something good. Puerto. Huh? Puerto. Puerto. Puerto Rico. <laughs> Hidden behind the legend lurks the person. Mike Tyson. A lot of complexity. Magic Johnson. Pete Rose. Hank Aaron. Bob Costas. You know, a great coach is like a great general. Don Shula or Colin Powell leading men into battle. I've been interviewing people for over 35 years and have never seen a smile like Michael Jordan's. But behind that smile, hunger like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Best job in the world, no doubt about it. We have the pick segment next, but first, uh, a message to you, America, as we are at a crossroads in these United States. You're exactly right, and I'd like to take this time just to talk to the American people, to urge them, to implore them to get out and vote for the candidate of your choice. A lot of 
regional issues up. Uh, I'm sorry. A message from your friends. <laughs> <again. It's laughs> yeah. All right, let's get to the fix now. James, you're, you're on a roll, you know, literally, figuratively. Anyway, a strong 3-0 and last week. You assumed the overall lead in the pick standings. Ron, 1-2 and two last week. you got to make up some ground. You see, James, there are 20 wins, I guess. Well, I'll tell you, I know why Wayne Fonts is in trouble. It was my <laughs> lock of the week last week. All right, we're going to talk about Washington and Buffalo. And uh, here are the choices. And Ron, the Redskins on the road at Orchard Park. Oh, line. absolutely. Jim Hannafin's got that offensive line clicking. We showed films of it. They will demolish the Buffalo Bills today. And Peter, you're going uh, against uh, the Redskins here. The Bills at home against the team on a real roll. Why? Yeah, I just think Buffalo at home right now, especially in what's going to be terrible weather from what everybody says, I really like the Bills. Okay. Yeah. Reasoning seems, seems logical. All right, Broncos Raiders, the Monday nighter. We told you how strong the Raiders are on Monday night, and James is going to go that way, but two other guys are going to go with the road team here. Well, like I, like I said, Shannon Sharp and now Terrell Davis, and you let the master, 36-year-old John Elway, throw that ball. I think they're going to break that 12-0 home winning streak on Monday night for Oakland. Yeah, Peter, you agree. You like the, uh, the Broncos on the road there on Monday. Here's, here's the thing with Denver right now. Elway's having the second best season of his career right now for one reason, that nobody can, can double up on him. I mean, they can't concentrate on him extensively, and I think that when you have a great running game, it shows you exactly how better the quarterback can be. All right, now we're going to talk about the sure thing, the locks, and this is a pretty daring move by you, Mr. Lofton. Cowboys over the Eagles. That's an intense NFC Eastern Division. But this is not the Cowboy team that we saw the first four weeks of the season. They have Michael Irvin back. Guys are healthy again on defense. Charles Haley is even coming in for his token appearances. And Leon Lett is a guy who the Philadelphia Eagles have to double team. And as soon as they do that, it frees up Tony Tolbert to come around that corner and also frees up the middle linebacker. And you like the, the pack over Detroit. You feel better now with the Magic Man at quarterback. Oh, absolutely. And put that guy from <laughs> Illinois in there, too. <laughs> Get him in there for a couple of series. And, uh, Peter, I guess uh, you feel Jerome Bettis will punish his old teammates, the Rams, huh? About it, even though probably the strength of the Rams' defense right now is their up-the-middle run defense, I think Bettis will shred them today. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Good job all the way around. Everybody enjoy the NFL day. We'll see you next week as we begin the second half of the NFL season. So long.